Good morning. Happy July 5th. Hope you enjoyed Independence Day. And I wanted to put together a video where I thought at two thirds of the way it might be good to take a comparison and take a look at how the statistics and the standings are working out based on how they worked out in regular season with this game, History Maker Baseball. Um, obviously, it's a bit of an experiment taking 10 teams from a league and kind of like putting them in their own, um, you know, pot, so to speak, and running them out and seeing how they go, just going six games against each of the other teams. Three at home, three away. Not going to go into home and away comparisons as far as records goes, but I mean, you can see the standings here. The Brewers, Nationals, Rangers, Red Sox are all up there. Uh, we actually, we have six teams that are at or above 500. And um, we'll just take a look and see how those things stack up. I exported some of my data to Excel. And so this is uh, kind of a busy chart. I didn't do any like rankings or sort by any column here. This is just the batters and um, Maybe maybe another time because I don't I don't have time to put together one for pitching today. Um, I feel like the hitting is a little more uh, a, a little more uh, of interest to people. I don't know why. I guess home runs are exciting, but um, I kind of started with that, and then I did standings, and I'm like, you know, what? I got started this video. I'm just like, I forgot pitching, but I'll do this another time. I'll do the pitching part. Let's just take a look at these hitting stats. Uh, first off, I just I started with this um, at bats because I, I wanted to get a gauge for the guys who have played so far, how close they are to their sort of like quote unquote usage limit. And I'm not sure if I'm going to enforce them, but it may inform me a little bit on trying to use different guys a little bit more. So for instance, right here, Brock Holt. So this is at bats left based on a comparison between how many at bats they had in real life times a third. So this is a third of a season. So this has been scaled down by a third. So, and then what I did was, is if you could see the formula here, I took for game started left, I just assumed four at bats a game, which is a kind of a, a liberal interpretation. Most guys are probably in the range here, but uh, Rafael Devers is a little low on his games played. He did have an injury for two or three games. And I may have sat him during a couple of lefties. Uh, on the mound, so he's pretty much going to be starting the rest of the way. Um, everybody else is pretty standard. Um, Vazquez and Betts are a little low too. Like they could, they'll probably start most, if not all, the rest. And I'm going to keep a close eye on some of them. But like guys like Brock Holt, he got a lot of starts because Eduardo Nunez had like a seven or eight game injury early in the season. And so Holt got used a lot and now he is basically at the limit who isn't, but Nunez only has three games left who hasn't kind of like got much is Marco Hernandez at second base. So he is going to get probably the lion's share of second base starts. from here. So this is, this is a nice little tool. I mean, I, I like that in Stratomatic PC when I tracked uh, the, the second league you could kind of get a good feel for when guys were getting overused. Um, you know, this is experimental. So on one hand, you don't want to limit yourself too much because it's kind of like theoretical. We have injuries and, you know, when we go to pitchers at some point, um, you know, like Steven Strasburg missed some time, Stroman missed some time. I'm not analyzing their innings pitched or anything, but if we were following those teams and those came up, then it might get... Um, adversely influenced. But let's take a look at like hits. So I put a color coded chart here. So basically it goes from green, high green is the extreme um, yes or good, and, um, and red is the extreme low. So like Marco Hernandez is way low, but that's because he had, has no hits right now. So that's why he is way behind. And I'm not sure why I scaled this. I guess what I'm saying is, is at this point in the season, who is like ahead of the game? Brock Holt clearly is. He's he had what 
26 hits and he's got 30. He's way over. So basically, he shouldn't start anymore. He'll get one more start, maybe two more starts if, if we're. But he's well overperformed. Uh, you know, Ben and Tendy is doing very well with hits. Where he isn't doing so well is with power. He should have four home runs at the end of the season. And he's uh, at one right now. So a little behind. Um, see, Christian Vazquez is underperforming as far as um, his, uh, you know, his his average isn't so good. But all you know, he's down on home runs. He had eight, and again, this is. He should have eight for a one-third season, so that means he had 24 in real life, and he is only at two right now. So we are uh, well down on, um, actually, he had like 20, he probably would have had 22 or something like that, because it's it's not exactly eight, it's seven point something. I, mean, I didn't, this is this is scaled by a third. So, uh, but as far as the hits go, you can see here uh, a nice, mostly in the middle, um, Probably, I mean, I should probably, uh, actually, I could do this right now. Let's go, uh, first let some these guys, right? And then equals uh, that minus this times 0.667. So we're, we're 21 hits ahead of the game right now. So um, total is, so, you know, that's why, you know, you see your batting average is going to be a little high when we take a look at that. Not not much high, but a little bit. Um, so for home runs, uh, things are pretty decent. Now, Martinez is actually right at his, what his total should be for, so he is ac actually quite ahead of the game. And I, I didn't scale this one. And it might actually be instructive if we do this. So there, so there we can see, um, well, you know, who's well ahead. Bradley Jr. is at seven. He had had seven and a third of a season. Uh, Mitch Moreland uh, is is well ahead. <laughs> So, and Mitch Moreland is coming back in here in August, so his totals are going to go up even more, probably. So, you know, the game, the game as far as the home runs is concerned, uh, well, and again, it's small sample size. We always have to keep that in mind with this kind of thing. It's like, we're, we're not playing a full season, so when we go to small sample, you know, you could get most of the power right in there, and then you could go the, the rest of the season at like a tenth of how much how many home runs he would pick up. And we won't ever get to see that because we're not going to play it out past 54. So that being said, he did have a power surge there, and so he is pretty strong. Now, again, Vazquez is the guy who's most obvious. Uh, Chavis also is a little low, um, but he should be at four, and he has two, so that's not too bad. Um, I think what's kind of nice is the averages here are pretty good. Yeah, yeah, again, Marco Hernandez is kind of an outlier. He's only played in a game, pretty much, and that was as a more or less a, a pinch hit. But he's going to get more time here as we close the season, a lot more time. <clears throat> um, you know, like your biggest average outliers are Pedroia, which if we, uh, if we go ahead and move the decimal places over here, Pedroia hit 100, so he's at, uh, up 100 with a point two. so... When you get to those kind of like fringe averages where things are really tough, and especially on a small sample size, you're going to get outliers like that. Pedroia, he's basically he doesn't get he doesn't show up anymore. He got hurt and he was out. Um, but like 0.83 for Steve Pierce again. That's a guy who gets 11, get basically 19 at bats in the season. Right? Or he's had 19. He has 11 left and. I, I don't know. I don't think he's even going to get to do it. We didn't use him. Probably didn't use him enough early in the season as we should have. Maybe we gave Moreland a little too much. Again, that's kind of tough to manage. Um, we're doing the best we can. But most of these, and so then the average 
batting average 275 and the actual one was 269 so pretty good right there and okay I got to make a, an admission I realized as I was making this up that I was incorrectly calculating OPS specifically uh, slugging percentage um, you know to, in order to do it right, you have to take hits minus the doubles, triples, and homers, and then do the doubles times two, triples times three, home runs by four. Or you can just do hits plus doubles plus triples by two plus homers by three. I mean, that's the other way. I wasn't doing that quite right. So some of my numbers have been off. This is a little bit better. Now, I don't have listed on the right here the real... Um, and when I say real, scaled by a third slugging percentage, but the OPS is actually pretty darn close. 818 versus 806, so it's a, a .012 difference. I mean, I think we will take that. Yeah, they're a little bit high against the, could be a relatively strong sample size in terms of like, you know, maybe we just got a hitting part of the schedule for them. The other thing is, it, there's also influences from the opponents. Um, you know, I don't. We had a little bit of good pitching early on with the, the Nationals, but then again, Strasburg got hurt, so we didn't face him. We didn't. I don't know if we faced Stroman or not. I think we might have won game, but maybe we should have faced him twice. In any regard, Boston faced a whole different set of pitchers than what they faced in real life, so they may have. You know, their their degree of difficulty by hitting may be lower. So, but it's. I would say it's within reason again we've got Vazquez who is underperforming a bit and um you know the guys who are over like Brock Holt Eduardo Nunez we're not going to see a whole lot of them Pedroia we aren't at all uh you know Devers OPS wise is a little up but again he's down in power so maybe he's been getting on base a little bit more often than what 429 on base percentage let's take a look at his on base percentage, 92. Blow that up. Where is Devers? Right. This is off of baseball reference. So, where are you? Right there you are. 361. So, there you go. 361 versus 429 for Devers. So, he is getting on base at a great clip. And that's the reason why he's um, up on hits a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so. Finally, let's just take a look at the standings comparison. So this is this was the real life standings, although it's again not sorted by anything. It's just the teams. I, I extracted this kind of like on my own from I didn't do the export to Excel or anything. I just took these numbers off of there and plugged them in. So if we come over here, um, so here is that just moved over and prettied up a little bit. In all in all, everybody is actually up on their winning percentage, except for the Orioles. And this is a percentage. Okay, so this is this is a this is uh, the percentage point. So 306 versus 333, they're almost three percentage points down. Boston is three percentage points up, 556 versus 519. So maybe even a little bit more. We could, you know, we could. Uh, blow this up one more time and see you know basically 30 points up you know we could we could do it that way if, if you prefer by the thousand we can do that maybe we should maybe this makes it a little easier for you guys and for me I don't know think of think of the percentage points so 30 points up almost 40 points up for Boston Milwaukee is up 90 on their real winning percentage right so Teams are doing a lot better, and that means that they're facing some horror uh, competition. And so it's not going to all equal out exactly. Um, but again, that's because we have six teams above, and, you know, we, we just don't have our, our uh, you know, the, the group that we picked, if you look at these averages, we've got one, two, three, four teams that are going to be over 500 in real life and here we have six of them right there you know so um 
you know, it, it, it is a little interesting that every, everybody is, like, overperforming except Baltimore, and I guess maybe they're eating up some of that percentage, but, um, you know, it is it is what it is, and uh, we'll see how it ends up at the end of the season. I have to, I, I'm still kind of processing a little bit how this ends up, uh, you know, working out. <laughs> but uh, um, anyway, that's it. Hit like. I'll try and get you the pitching stuff here pretty soon.